Thanks for joining us for another episode of Tech One Two. Today we will discuss how to grow your business even during tough times, especially in the economic downturn that we're about to face. I'm joined today with Andrew Beauchantin, CEO at Empist, and Nick Stavropoulos, CFO at Empist. Really excited to have you guys in the studio today. Thank you very much, John. We're excited to be here. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Well, guys, let's just uh, dive right in. Um, so we know that we're about to face an economic downturn in 2023. Uh, we're already a couple months in. Um, what, is, what does that mean to you, Andrew? Um, just an economic downturn and, you know, is this an opportunity for businesses or is it something that businesses really need to be concerned about? Oh, that's a great question, John. I think that um, many businesses will see it as a time to really tighten uh, tighten up their their uh, the purse strings and and really go into uh, more of a mode of protection, um, and that that's not uncommon um, for a lot of businesses and even uh, individual households families they're thinking the same thing because oftentimes they're worried about what's going to happen with the future and and future is uncertain. Um, but really the way that, that we try to look at it uh, and when what we look at in our own business is there is a great opportunity um, even during an economic mm -hmm. downturn um, and primarily in how can we make ongoing continuous improvements, how can we better utilize technology and process, and how can we uh, best mobilize and motivate our existing personnel to get the most out of the business. So for us, it's an opportunity to find out how can we build efficiencies um, and, and not necessarily look, f look to um, cutting costs, but look to how can we perhaps increase our presence, our visibility um, in the marketplace. Um, and, and it's not necessarily a time where we would decrease spending, especially when it comes to marketing, but where we would look for how can we make improvements through automation. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, totally, totally agree. And, you know, Nick, is this is this a period that companies should be retracting or going all in? Yeah, I mean, if you hear what the news are saying, you should be retracting. I totally agree with what Andrew mentioned, right, that you actually need to be more of an offense and a realist and really don't see this through the emotional lens, but through this through the logical lens, right? Yes, we hear in the news, the world economy is retracting. It's actually it's going to grow about 2.3% 2, 2 this year. We're not going to see the 5, 6, 7% growth that we have seen in previous years. The U.S. deficit is expected to grow by $1.4 trillion this year. So that's mm -hmm. on top of our already, what, $30 trillion deficit that we have, sure. right? And the true U.S. GDP is not expected to grow almost at all, like a 0.6%. And by next year, we're going to see some improvements. So obviously, everybody has put on the gloves. Everybody's getting ready to play defense. And primarily, this is we hear this from enterprise-level businesses who are either connected straight to government contracts because the government itself fills in wants to retract or because they're anticipating something more to be sustained through the years. But honestly, I totally agree with Andrew. This is the time to really think about your own microeconomy, see the true value that you put in, into the world as a business, and try to promote it and try to tell people, hey, we're still here to do business. The world economics, yes, say that there's a slowdown, but there's opportunity. Absolutely. And usually throughout time, um, and throughout history, even in the in the toughest of economic times, there are very distinct winners, and there are companies that lose, and typically the companies that win go on the offensive. Yeah, I mean, we looked at it just over the history of time, like you said, and Nick, you mentioned something that really jumped out to me. I mean, the promotion, promoting, and promoting the business is so important, especially when so many businesses are retracting. And we all understand that businesses need to, you know, make sure that they're operating with efficiencies mm -hmm. um, and controlling certain things within the business. But when we just talk about promoting the businesses, um, you know, Andrew, let me just ask you, I mean, how important is the promotion in promoting and marketing a business, especially during these times? Well, during these times, it's paramount. Um, you, you really... It, the goal of any business should be to uh, to get to a point where we're known in the marketplace. Um, you know, best best known beats least known, right? So best known beats best product. So really getting to the point where we are best known as an organization should be the goal in any time, but especially during a, a downturn because the nice part about it is there are a lot of businesses that are going to look to cut costs 
and that includes marketing and promoting their business. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities to market your business and to promote your business increase and the costs actually decrease as well because there's a need to fill a lot of those spots. So it's a great time if you're really looking to, uh, to build your business, promote your business, the time is now. Especially, it's not gonna change the need to bring on new clients and that's really where even during an economic downturn where you should be um, looking to, to uh, reduce costs, um, but you're only gonna be able to reduce costs down to a certain number, you have to still continue to focus on how can I bring in clients that have a need for our business and our service. Mm -hmm. I love that. Best known beats best. Yeah, best, best known, known beats, beats best. best. Yep. I mean, that's something that definitely resonates for us as well. Um, Andrew, you mentioned just you know the opportunity of perhaps even cutting costs. Uh, uh, Nick, let me just ask you, I mean, especially um, being in finance, uh, in, on the financial side of the business, um, what should companies do um, as they're assessing just overall costs within the organization, especially during these times? Yeah, I mean, listen, we all have to be always mindful of costs, right? But you have to also understand at what cost the cutting of costs is actually prohibiting you from accelerating yourself and achieving growth. And I think that's the balance, even for us, right? We have sat ourselves down on executive meetings and we're trying to figure out. We know we have to cut some costs based on some projections and some things that they're coming or they're not coming up. But how far do we sacrifice that? Instead of like saying, okay, I'm gonna to have to balance it and be ready to even hire sometimes ahead of growth or to be able to mimble here, but take my money and put it somewhere where I know it's gonna bring yield better returns for my company. But you can't do any of this without the right data. So we have to be very mindful that we have the right technologies in our corporations. And that goes to not just businesses like us who are in tech, but legal, financial, associations, really manufacturers have the data to make a decision and say, the data is telling me that here is where I need to cut costs. So we're not looking at a holistic pyramid top-down cost cutting. Right. And here is where now, since the savings that I'm taking here, I'm just, just going to put them in my bank account that doesn't do any really good for you. Take them and fuel aspects of my business that they're going to bring back great results in any turn of the economy, by the way. So we don't have to exercise this only when the economy is having a slowdown, as supposedly is expected, but also in the growth side of the economy. Because again, costs are important. You always have to be nimble and watch where you have your ROI. And that's what's missing in a lot of discussions, the ROI. Yeah, actually, Nick, Nick mm -hmm. brings up a, a very valid and great point. Um, you know, this should be an exercise you're doing regardless of the, the ec economic climate. Um, but really looking at what are the, the uh, technologies and the applications that we currently utilize in our environment. And are we fully utilizing those technologies? In other words, we, you know, we've talked about this, we were talking about this the other day, you know, we have all of these subscriptions, great applications, great tools, but are we fully utilizing them? And, and, or do we just have licensing for individuals that aren't utilizing them? And, and, and in so doing, do we have other individuals within our organization that can be utilizing this technology? So it isn't so much about just reducing and cutting costs as Nick pointed out globally in your environment, but really looking at specifically what are the applications we're using that are fueling and driving our business and can we optimize and maximize the usage of those applications we likely can find some redu some reduction in costs there and we should utilize those savings and put them into as we mentioned promoting your business fueling your business and pushing forward furthermore this is a time when when a lot of businesses who are retracting because that's what the economy is doing and that's what they think is the right path forward Sometimes businesses will retract so much that they're not providing the level of service and support that they need to provide um, and or the type of products to their clients. It's a great opportunity for a business that's striving forward, not retracting to pick up a lot of that business. So a lot of the things that we're talking about today certainly aren't due to just the current times. Sure. These are things that organizations should be doing on a regular basis. I mean, you mentioned some from a technology perspective, shadow IT. Um, multiple applications out there keep spreading wide with applications only using a small percentage of them. So these are certainly things that we shouldn't be focused on just right now. Absolutely. These are things that organizations should be focused on every day. Right. Every day in operating it, it, And it's funny because I was just happening to read today, actually, a McKenzie report that says 95 of the U.S. CEOs are looking to invest in technology transformation 
as a reaction to what they think is going to happen in the economy in the next year, sure. through this year and next year. I mean, we've been preaching about technology transformation for the last 23 years in existence as a company, mm -hmm. right? Right. So technology transformation is not something that you use as a magic bullet or a tool to combat something. It's actually should be one of the primary discussions on the table of every executive team that will say, hey, through technology transformation, we are not only realizing things that we can allocate towards our growth, we are actually finding ways to reduce costs and primarily we also get data multiple from multiple sources that mm -hmm. give us guidance through even our operational plan. Right. Uh, number one threat for US businesses right now is too much diversification, too, mu too many systems trying to do one thing. And that's normal because a lot of companies as they grow, they adapt systems slowly. I have the need for this system, I'll bring it into my business. Then something else comes up, oh, I will bring this system also to my business. And at some point, you forget the true purpose of having the first system in the first place. Right. You're stuck with multiple sources of data that you don't know how to digest and bring in a single point of truth. Yep. It's costing you more money, and you also probably have hired more people than you need to because you need to have people fuel those systems and trying to get something out of those systems. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great point. Um, and, and that's the application sprawl that John was talking about. We, we had an application to address one issue when the reality is that application may be able to address multiple issues and we may be able to reduce the amount of applications that we utilize. But when you said businesses are looking for technology transformation, what are they using for, what do they want technology to do to transform the business, to automate their business? Most businesses are looking for ways that they can automate what they're doing through existing personnel and or not needing to add additional personnel to get the maximum maximum uh, output from the current, current team that they have. Yeah. I mean, you guys made some great points and maybe I can just leave it to you guys to have a conversation <laughs> today. You guys are, uh, thank you, absolutely. The, um, when, we, when we look at just the overall technology spectrum and we know technology is definitely an enabler for growth. We're not in business. Businesses hopefully are not in business only for the year or only for 2023. They're looking ahead. And even based on statistics that we saw, they're, they're projecting that there's going to be a decline in 2023, but then growth is going to pick that up back in 2024. Correct. So it certainly is about focused about the future. But when we look at technology being a cornerstone of growth and you mentioned automations and operational efficiencies, um, I, what would you rate? What would you rate, I'll ask you both this question, on a scale of 1 to 10 um, on technology, how important is it for technology to have the appropriate strategy, technology uh, in place, and adoption of your staff in 2023 for your future growth in 2024? Well, for me, it's it's a definite 10. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about it as a team. Um, the three Ps, uh, we, we, we talk about it all the time, you know, people, pro product, and process. Um, obviously, the other big P is profitability, but you get those three working together. Technology is the glue that, that brings all those together and gets you to maximize each one of those outputs. So for me it, and for us, I feel as an organization uh, at Empus, we really look to, uh, to utilize technology to maximize the output of those three Ps and, and, to, and to get the most uh, potential profitability that we can as an mm -hmm. organization. So it's not by accident that that's what CEOs are looking for today is transformational technology. Yeah, absolutely. And we know scared money makes no money. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's true. Yeah. So scared money makes no money. But uh, Nick, I ask you the same question. Yeah. I mean, it's a no brainer. It is 10. Uh, you know, it's funny. There's another survey that was done by McKinsey and said about 45% of U.S. companies of any size, but usually probably they were talking about mid-size to small size, when they're making budgets for the future, they only put in those budgets primarily expenses. How are they going to manage expenses? Right. To me as a CFO, this is like navigating a ship with only half a compass working. Uh, that you will never get to your destination. And through technology, you are able actually to make decisions, not just as budgets, but as true projections that include budgetary numbers in them, where also saw how you're gonna grow and which areas you wanna grow, which markets you're gonna go to, how long how long, and how much and how what's the cost to go into those markets, how many people you need to hire, what are you gonna do with those people, how are you gonna bring to the market, what type of marketing you're gonna have 
have in those markets and, and thus expanding all the overall business profitability and exposure out in the markets. So without the use of technology, it's very hard to sit down and on an Excel sheet, let's say, for example, try to crunch this and piece it all together, which you might do. But then how do you hold yourself accountable against such a plan? How do you work against a variance report that has to be created to, to again, add as a course correction into your overall trip? Uh, so technology plays huge role, not just only into the infrastructure of a business, but also in finance, in operations, in people, as Andrew mentioned, the three Ps, right? Uh, so yeah, it's of utmost importance. Yeah, it's not just the output, it's a big part of the input as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's let's focus a bit on that on the <clears throat> excuse me the people process and product. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about product technology. We talked about, um, but one of the big things that, especially as we're seeing just in the market, I mean, there's massive layoffs that are happening. Yep, we're seeing it everywhere by the thousands. We're seeing large corporations and small corporations that are just laying off very rapidly, trying to prepare themselves for this. And as we said early on. We don't believe in retracting. We believe this is an opportunity. This isn't an opportunity to just go out there and just do whatever you want through a methodical strategic approach. You can definitely see a lot of growth, but we know people. People mm. is an important part of growing any business. Growing a great company is only done with great people. Right. So what do we see right now? What should companies be looking for right now with all these people right now that are hitting the street, all this talent that's uh, rapidly hit in the market. How is this an opportunity for the companies that are not retracting and are trying to grow? I mean, this is a personnel, your people part of, of your business is very, very important. Having the right team, I think most businesses understand that having the right individuals in the right positions that are also capable of being flexible to uh, to attack other areas of the business that may have need, especially when, you start, when you're when you talking about a small and medium-sized business, that's very, very, very important. Um, right now, uh, for, for a period leading up to this, um, it was uh, definitely a... a um, uh, you know, a job seekers market, right? Job seekers controlled and leveraged where the, the business was going. They had a lot more options available to them. But with the incredible uh, resurgence of talent in the marketplace, it's just great individuals, um, businesses that, that, that tide has shifted businesses now have the leverage because they have a lot of people, a lot of individuals lobbying and a lot of great individual and talent lobbying for, uh, for positions they may have open. So again, it's a great opportunity if businesses are very careful and take their time, have a good hiring process, um, adhere to their process and wait and search for the right candidate. Um, it's a great opportunity to find somebody who comes aboard that not only can fulfill the position that they need, but has the great, the right attitude, the get done attitude, and is willing to to really help the team grow as an organization. And you're really looking for individuals that can be multi talented in that in that regard. And there's a lot of them in in the marketplace today. Yeah, very very rapidly too. There's right. a lot of people in the market. Um, but just looking at your in, at your people, people being such an important piece of it, Nick. I know you're so involved with our people side of the business too. I mean, how do you really align with, uh, stay aligned with the people during what could be considered an uncertain time, not just for the business, for them. There's, you know, they may be retracting in their personal lives, not really focused. There's, they're getting a lot of external pressures. We know those pressures are gonna be extended back into the company, which will then affect the company and have a domino effect. So how do you stay aligned with your people during this time? I mean, what a magical word, right? Align? Alignment is everything. If you're not aligned in your business and also in your personal life with your loved ones and the family, you're not going to achieve anything, right? And this comes back to many businesses are usually reactive uh, recruiters because they don't have that plan in their five, 10 year horizon of exactly what they need to accomplish. So they're reactively hiring people because they need to close gaps in some sort of their operations, right? So in order though, however, to become aligned with somebody, you have to be a great communicator. You gotta be able to really communicate first. What are the goals of the business? So my name is John. I own a business, it's called Empist. These are my goals. This is where I'm trying to get the company. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Phenomenal. You are going to be someone who's going to work for me. And I want to make sure that since you understand where we're trying to go, what are you looking to accomplish out of this relationship? So let's talk about that. Then you got to say, 
I need to be on the same page. Since I'm growing, I'm looking for somebody who's not only I'm hiring for today, but because I have my plan as John for the next five years, I know where I can take you. Would you like to be part of the journey? So you communicate that with them. Fantastic. Now, let me tell you what's expected of you today. Today, for the role that I'm hiring you, I'm hiring you for this and this and this. And by the way, I'm also going to give you the tools that you need in order to be successful in those two or three things that I need you to do. Right. Do you understand that? Fantastic. Now, once you feel that you have everything that you have to succeed, and I need this and this and this from you, I'm expecting those results to come through. However, if those results don't come through, then I need to be honest with you that this and this and this will happen. So right now, what you have done is given a bigger vision of what you're trying to go, where you're trying to go to as a company, that you hire them not only for the position of today, which is hopefully not just a reactive position. We're talking a lot about hiring the right who, and then worrying about the what, right? The what is on the resume. Hopefully we can test it and verify that it's the right what but we're looking for the right who, and then align this person with you to go up that hill in the future so that you can fight together and get something that you both want out of this relationship, but also hold them accountable that if you don't do all these things, this is, thing is going to happen here in your little microcosm, but also Empis will fail in the future as well. Mm -hmm. So alignment is a big word, but with that communication, you cannot achieve it. Totally agree. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, I mean, it's it's probably easier said than done for businesses, perhaps even for new employees that are coming in. But you have staff within your organization. You're already operating your company. You may have staff. You want things may change. You may need people to take on some additional responsibilities mm -hmm. as you're as you're putting in place new things. Perhaps you're a business that has not been marketing previously. We talked about marketing. Sure. Perhaps your sales team has not been very strong and you need to have more hands on deck of your existing staff for sales. Perhaps there needs to be improvement in the process and operational efficiencies, whatever that may be. How can you get everybody aligned that's already with the company, Andrew? I know you obviously with uh, work with so many different people within our, uh, within our organization. How do we get people aligned with what the direction is? Because we all know there isn't a straight line to the destination. There's never a straight line to where you're trying to go. You may have to, there may be some hurdles, there may be some uh, potholes, there may be certain things, but how do, you, how do you get everybody aligned with different approaches that you may need to take as your organization is trying to implement new uh, initiatives? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, actually, it, it goes back to uh, the same journey that we talk about with, uh, with, your, with a new hire. Um, you know, because interesting as as Nick's mentioning that, a lot of businesses are saying, "Well, you know what? We're 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 not going to retract, but we're not necessarily going to dive full forward and and hire more more team members. Can we perhaps repurpose and reutilize and realign um, our existing staff? So that's that's that is certainly something that we face even as an organization now. Can we get the maximum output um, through our process and our product, and especially our personnel? Um, so a big part of that is having really solid process, um, having the right technology and aligning that technology with what we're trying to achieve within each department, within each team. Um, the other part of it too is, as you know, as, as Nick's talking about it, it just rings for me the recent conversations we've had and all businesses should have to really make sure do they have a properly defined and well-known mission, vision, and what are their core values. If you have good, strong mission, and everybody understands what that mission is, like we're gonna take this mountain, what is the mission, how are we gonna do it? And everybody's aligned with that. Do you have clear vision? Do they know how we're gonna go about doing it? Um, and, uh, and the why behind why we're, why we're, why we're doing this? Um, and then of course, what are the core values that we need to see in, in the individuals when those are clearly defined and that's the responsibility of the executive team to make sure everybody understands that, uh, then, then it's easy for people to say, not say, well, that's not my job because yeah. really what you're looking for is you're looking for individuals to say whatever it takes yeah. to get the job done. So those are the, those are the very first steps to identify, do we have the right team members now? When we say this great opportunity in the marketplace, the great opportunity in the marketplace may be not necessarily adding staff, but in some cases for businesses, they may have to replace staff that have that right mindset, that really are geared towards why are we doing this? 
what are our core values, and what is it going to take for us to get there? And I'm, I'm I'm down to do that, right? So you really need a team that's that's geared towards that, and you can leverage the great talent that is in the marketplace. That if you don't have it currently, you can you can supplement and get that that right talent. The other big part of it is you have to you have to set very specific goals. I mean, ultimately, as an organization, you have to understand we use a methodology, as you know, objectives and key results. It's all about setting appropriate objectives and what are those key results that we need to achieve it. That is at a at a uh, macro level. At a micro level, we look at KPIs, key performance indicators, and we utilize a scale to indicate where is each individual performing against those KPIs. So clearly defined key performance indicators, a scale that everybody understands what dictates what we need at a bare minimum, what falls below that, what's above that. And then even during uh, a, a, an economic downturn, there is a way to, to allow individuals to achieve their goals for those individuals that are performing above uh, the standards that we need just to just to get by. And, and that's by putting in potentially a bonus plan as we've done with our staff for those high performers to for them not to experience the effects and we don't need to add staff to get maximum production. Mm -hmm. And we're not looking to retract. No. We're looking to, I mean, we want to be efficient and we want to stay disciplined. Discipline is a very important uh, piece of Absolutely. growing a business. But let's just talk about discipline and as, there, as it relates to finances, Nick. Um, as an organization, companies out there, you know, oftentimes they may not have their books in order. They may not know what's coming in, what's going out. How important, especially now, um, is discipline on fin financials? Again, it's it's part of, of a compass, right? So there's a few things that make a part of a compass, you know, operations, technology, people. Finance is definitely one of those four things. Um, you have to, again, start with where you want to go. And then you have to reverse engineer that. And we have done that. We have done that very successfully. We decided we're going to take a ride and grow this company to a certain size. And then we had to reverse engineer the whole plan. And when you do that, it takes almost half the stress away that, hey, I actually know the targets that I have to hit. So then you really have to have the KPIs and the process in place to test yourself against those targets. If you're not able to measure how your performance is against something that's going to take you somewhere, you will never get there. That's one side of the pie. The other side of the pie is to completely understand how the dollar flows through your organization. How it goes from money that you have put in because you had to start somewhere to that that became a product that you developed. What was the expected ROI on that product? Now you're selling that product. You combine it with some other services that some other vendor uh, contributions as well. How is that coming back to you? How is it recognized? How fast is it coming back to you? Are you checking your account receivables to make sure that you're at least 70 to 80% 60 days in? That's a good indicator, for example, right? Always be mindful of that. Then once you collect your funds, then how is that getting distributed between cost of goods sold, which as we know, it's a very important indicator about how expensive is your promise? How much it's costing you to keep your promise, in other words, to your clients? That's within the cost of goods sold. And then how much of that is going into the operating expenses? Because there's different cost cutting methods that you have to use for cost of goods sold and different for operating expenses. And for mm -hmm. those who are listening to us here today and they don't understand that, I urge you to connect with your CPA or your finance person and really understand what that means. And then you're left with your net income, right? Your net profit. And you have to make sure that when you build that plan, the 10 year or the five year plan of how your business is gonna grow, not just on the budgetary expense, as we mentioned as income as well, how close are we achieving this, right? Um, yes, there's always things that are gonna happen in the economy or in your business or with some of your clients that they're gonna cause you to get off the course. But it's how quickly you respond by understanding all the previous things that I just mentioned that's going to get you out of the hole and they're going to get you back on track. Fantastic. I mean, you, you mentioned a couple things that are going to be great segues into, um, you mentioned service. You, I mean, there's, you have clients. So how important is it? I'll, I'll ask you this question, Andrew. Um, I mean, service. We have all these businesses now that um, they're likely servicing some type of client, sure. whether they're a supplier, whether they're direct to consumer, whether they're working with other businesses. How important is it now 
especially to not lose sight of servicing their clients while all these other external factors that they're needed to consider and some of these recommendations that we made, how important is continue to service your people and your clients? It's paramount. I mean, you know, we talk about it all the time. It, it's paramount at any, during any period, but especially during a time when businesses are looking at where can I cut costs because they're going into a retraction mode. Um, perhaps they're considering cutting costs as it relates to the relationship with your business. So you really, you're, you're forced with the inevitable decision of are, the, are we going to continue to have this partnership or are we going to lose this partnership or elements of that partnership? The, the best way to insulate against that is provide an exceptional level of service in all touch points with a client. And I, I, you know, I think as we've talked about, I, I believe it's the most important element um, in a business relationship is, is understanding that we need to be of service in all instances and at all points in our relationship. So if we, we maintain that mentality and we do not forget the importance of being of service um, and that it is paramount to selling, um, you know, we're, we're not looking to sell more to our clients. We're looking to service our clients more because through that service, we will uncover areas where we can help out their business even more. So then we become invaluable. We don't become uh, a cost, but we become an investment for that organization. Mm -hmm. So for any of your clients, any businesses, certainly in the, in the service industry, um, this is a time to double down and, and provide the highest caliber of service possible because the sales will continue and perhaps even increase even during an economic downturn because they're going to be looking like the technology that they deploy in their environment. How can I maximize the relationship with that I have with this partner and can they do more for me? Do I need to have two or three partners doing this or can I have one partner that's servicing uh, all aspects of, of my needs as a business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and companies that are facing some uncertainty right now, um, it's so important to stay in contact with your customers. Sure. It's pick up the phone, call them, say, what's going on? How can we help you? Because problems are opportunities for organizations, but you need to stay in front of the customer. And it's you may, have, you may be a service provider. You're providing daily services to them like we do. Sure. However, it's just picking up the phone. How's it going? What's going on? How can we help you? in any way because yes service is senior mm -hmm. and service comes in many different ways it's not just servicing you know reactively servicing a customer it's actually being out there making them understand that you're there to support them make yourself available to them and if there's a difficult time that they're going through you're going to get through it together like we did with many customers during the pandemic we got through it sure we got them through that they thrived they grew um and we all work together as a partnership so I think we're approaching uh, time here. I think we really. Uh, I mean, we can Already? go. Yeah, we can go. We can go wow. all. We can go all day on this. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll have to have a part two, a part three, and you know, part twelve at some point. But I mean, we can certainly talk about this all day. You know, I just wanted to open it up for any closing remarks, Nick. Yeah, I mean, I want to say, and I wrote this thing down because I, w I was I was listening to again uh, various reports from other economic news outlets, and one thing that stuck out to me is. Um, Technology is not a cost of doing business. It is an opportunity to do business. Right. Technology is not a cost of doing business. It's an opportunity to do business. So to all of our audience out there, and many of you are probably decision makers, whether CIOs, CTOs, CEOs, CEOs, CFOs, anybody who's involved in a high level in the business, and you've been looking until now, technology as a necessary expense, you need to rewire your brain because people are watching, your clients are watching, and most importantly, your people are watching. If right. you haven't invested in technology as much as you, you should have, not only impacts the production of your current employees, but it also impacts how other people looking in through the glass door into your business if they're going to want to work with you in the first place. Mm -hmm. And it becomes very evident even before the interview process to them that this is not a company they want to join because of this reason. So invest in technology. Trust it. If you're going to build it by yourself, that's fine. You have to make sure you have the stamina, the money, and the patience to do it. Also, you can consider hiring a company like Empest that can help you achieve those goals so then you can focus on your main thing. Absolutely. I mean, it is not an expense. It's an asset. 
for businesses, and that's really what we've been talking about. I have a question for you, John, though. Sure. Um, as a CEO, you know, and, and a lot of other CEOs that are listen, listening in on this call, w- during this time, what is it that's keeping you up, and where do you find, um, you know, a level of comfort in, in how we're approaching it as an organization? Well, I think when we look at all the pillars of the organization, it's really having a good understanding as to where your your current state is, what future state you want to get to, and work in that gap. So really nothing's keeping me up at night because I know that we have the right people in right. place in order to deliver on our promise to our customers and to our people. Um, again, our, our people are our customers and our internal. Um, it's just continuing to push forward. It's certainly, you guys brought up some valid points um, and I love them. I even wrote them down. You probably saw me taking some notes here. I did. I did. Um, You're... You know, although we meet very regularly, <laughs> there's some things you guys are certainly bringing some gems to the table. But just looking at, you know, focus on our people, process, and product. And as you mentioned, the profitability side of it. So for us, it's really, it's not just during this time. It's as a company, we want to make sure that we have our finger on the pulse, all aspects of the business, making sure that we're all rowing in the same direction making sure that there's true alignment, making sure that we have the proper discipline that when we say that we're going to do something, whether it's internally or externally, we're going to do it. And having that commitment to the organization are things that certainly, you know, I'm really focused on, but not just now. But this time has actually allowed me to take a step back for a moment and say, wait a second, what exactly are we doing? Where can we refine things? Where Where can we be more productive? Where can we be more profitable? Mm -hmm. The fourth P that you mentioned, the profitability side of it, is an area that I'm really focused on. Absolutely, and uh, and you know that's guided a lot of our efforts, and and really a lot of what we talked about today have come from those types of conversations. I know we've doubled down on mission, vision, core values. Mm -hmm. Why so so critical? Alignment, big part of that. How do we align properly, not just internally, but externally with our client base? Yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today on today's podcast about how you can grow your business during difficult times, even during an economic downturn. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you once again to Andrew and Nick for joining me today. Pleasure. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Bye.